so we started off by talking about, um, you know, kind of the district's response and how you guys have felt about your voice being heard as parents. Um, but I'm curious now to kind of take a broad look at the past, um, I think it has been officially just about uh, 18 months since March 2020. And I'm curious on two fronts. I'm curious to see what you have learned about yourself since March 2020 and what you have learned about your children since March 2020. Um, so I'll give you a minute to kind of digest that. And other people on the chat, please feel free to drop what you've learned from your children and what you've learned about yourself um, since March 2020. Because I think that this um, set of circumstances that we found ourselves in uh, over this past year and a half has really caused a lot of us to dig deep and, um, you know, just kind of look at our lives in a completely different way. So I'm really curious to see what you all have learned either about yourself or about, um, about your children, even though I know some of them are, are really small, but I still think there's some lessons there. Yeah, Victoire, go ahead. I think like for me, the big thing was how resilient everybody has been, um, children and parents. Um, I think for children at first, yeah, I was worried. I was like, oh my God, our kids are going to go to school. There's going to be the mask, the plastic thing around. They had to have a towel to like have their lunch break on a towel six feet apart. It was like, oh, so stressful. And then it was like no big deal for them. Like my daughter kept on coming back from school and she was all excited and like she kept on wearing her mask on her chin afterwards. And I was like, you can't remove your mask, you know? And she was like, oh, it's okay. So that was like the first thing. It was like, oh, I made a bigger deal in my head of this than it actually was. Um, and I think as parents, right? Like, I mean, at some point I was working full time in the middle of my MBA. I was 11 months pregnant and then we didn't have an au pair for a while. And I was like, oh, how do we do this? And there are days where you're in total panic mode thinking I'm never going to be able to do this. And now you look back and it's like, we did this and we're still doing this and it's still insane in some ways, but like we're doing it the best that we can. And so I think like sometime looking back, we have to be a little kinder to ourselves to realize everything we have achieved in the best of and worst of circumstances. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I learned, um, like, so we, obviously we didn't have this school thing as much because we would, you know, that the school part education wise didn't change much, but a lot of our, not a lot, all of our extracurricular activities that we do were canceled. And so what we did and what I learned is that you can, it doesn't take a whole lot to make kids have fun. And so we started doing um, you know, there's national days for everything every month. And so we, we tried to make it more fun by letting the kids pick one or two days a month to celebrate. Like last Friday was celebrated um, National Lemonade Day. Earlier this month, there was National Leave Zucchini on Your Neighbor's Porch Day that we celebrated. Um, but we re I really learned kind of like what McTwaw was saying. I mean, when you set standards for your kids, they you know, and you expect them to follow it and you tell them why they should follow it. They really do it. Cause like we, we told our kids, you know, you have to wear a mask. That's, there's not a choice. Our oldest, our oldest two went to a camp out in Kerrville, uh, which is about two hours away from us this summer. And, you know, they wore their masks the whole time. Um, now that camp actually had a mask mandate pretty much, but then my oldest son went to um, a boy scout camp that didn't have a mask mandate but we told him you need to wear it all the time. And he was one of like two or three kids in the camp who had, who was told to wear a mask and he wore it the whole time. I mean, every time they would post pictures on the Facebook group of, you know, what they were doing that day, there was Isaac wearing his mask, you know, the, the whole time. And so we've really tried to benefit that. I mean, my wife and I are both vaccinated, but we wear our masks everywhere we go because we figure if we're going to tell them they have to wear it, we should emulate that for them and show them that it's not really a big deal because it's just a piece of fabric over my face. And it doesn't really hurt me. I mean, my wife's a nurse anesthetist. She wears an N95 all day at work. So, you know, a piece of fabric after work isn't really anything for her. And for me, I mean, I wear a mask, what, the 30 minutes I'm outside 
a day since I work from home and stay with them. So it's been um, an interesting learning experience. I think I learned that, um, and this piggybacks a little off of Adam uh, and a little off of the class, that if, if you let the wheels fall off, all the wheels are gonna fall off. But if you put forth a little effort and just keep trying, you can keep things together pretty well. Um, and kids really are resilient. Um, we went to an outdoor picnic recently. It was at somebody's house and they had the food inside. And we walked you know, in, in these folks' basement um, to fix a plate. And um, my almost eight-year-old son like grabbed his shirt and pulled it up over his face. And I, I said, oh, it must just be the smell. Like, you know, I. I was new to a lot of the people there and didn't, it was a little parent embarrassment of like, why is my kid doing this? Um, and it was a lot of doctors and nurses. So one of the people bent over and said, what, you know, what, what's making you uncomfortable? And he said, I'm not vaccinated. I'm not vaccinated. I can't be in here. I'm inside. I need to, I don't have my mask and I'm not vaccinated. And she was like, okay, I'm a doctor. And she pulled out her, her sheet of fabric, you know, not a big deal. And she was like, I'm happy to put it on. You're right. I'll spread the word. And she kind of just quietly walked around the room and was like, we are inside. Let's go ahead and mask up, you know, set the example. And, you know, in my mind, I went, wow, my seven-year-old did this. Like he affected this change. And now like everybody's doing this. But I also was kind of like on a global scale, why is it my seven-year-old gets this and is doing this? and is actively aware of this. And there are still so many adults who are so frustrated over a piece of fabric over their face. Yeah, I, I will piggyback off that too. Like my, my kids get the idea of, I wear a mask to see my friends. I wear a mask to protect others. Um, and I, I really, admire that about them. Um, and I just, I think that's what I've learned is that they are, that they are compassionate people. And I, you always knew that, but like to see it in examples is always really heartwarming and wonderful to see that your kids really, they care about other people and they care to be, to do what they need to do to be around their friends or to keep everybody safe. And so, um, I really love that. I, um, I mentioned before that my son, he was in kindergarten and in first grade, um, and he's a, t he's a very punctual, he's a very type A, very future engineer kind of kid. Um, I thought that homes, that having virtual school while working was going to be the worst experience of my life. Um, it was not great, but it was not the worst thing that I've ever gone through, and I could definitely see, oh, if someone said, oh, you have to do this again for a period of time, sure, but I definitely want the end point. Like, tell me when the end is. Um, I'm like, we've been going for before, like for the duration of this. But I, that's what I've definitely learned. I thought that I had him at the beginning at the end of the dining room table. I was on one end of it and I thought he was going to need so much attention, so much hand holding, and how much involvement I was going to be. But he, was, he took to it. And a lot of that, it goes to the credit of the teachers and the instruction that they provided that he was able as a kindergartner to go through all of his slides, all of his work, by himself and we would just kind of check in around different points and the same with first grade like he knew he had to get on a zoom call he knew how to get on his zoom call he knows how to get on wi-fi like he it got into like all this stuff that you're like how does this at the time a five-year-old know how to do this um and so that was pretty nice to see like they are resilient they are resourceful and they they can do more than i think that they can do um along the same way what I also learned about myself is a couple of things. One, um, my patience has limits and it's okay to say that they have limits and it's okay to say, I'm not me, I'm not it, and I need to tap out. And um, that was something that was very different for me. I'm definitely the type of person that's, I'm burning the candle from multiple ends. I'm the one throwing myself into the fire. I'm the one that's volunteering for all the things. 
um, and burning myself out along the way and that learning that it's okay that I say no because I just don't have the capacity. It's kind of not nice to think that it took a pandemic to realize that, but I, I definitely put way too much on my plate and it was okay to say no to things and the world did not end because I did not do it myself and that there are other people out there that can pick it up from in multiple ways, both at home and at work. Wonderful. Yes. And as a self-care coach, I love hearing that, <laughs> uh, being able to recognize uh, the limits um, that we have each and every day and our energy and our patience and all of that. Um, I definitely think um, for me to answer the question um, in terms of what I learned, um, I learned that um, the I think the pace that we were at prior to the pandemic, I think for me was too fast. Um, we, I was kind of like you, Danielle, I was, you know, PTA mom and this and that and all these other things. And the pandemic really forced me to kind of get back to basics and make sure I'm doing these basic things very well. Um, and one of those basic things is just really that quality time with my kids building a business, as I'm doing workshops, as I'm doing all of these different things, launching products, trying to travel to go to different conferences and events. Um, I really want, you know, that quality time with my kids to be something special that they remember from their childhood. 